Welcome, everybody. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Black Girls Code charity stream with Mythic Quest. My name is Felicia from Ubisoft Film and Television, and I'll be your host for the next two hours. Now, Ubisoft has already made a donation of $25,000 to sponsor 25 students to participate in the Black Girls Code Summer Program. But we want to raise even more money during today's stream. To make a donation, click on the Tiltify link, and let's see if we can beat our goal of $2,500. We're already at about $501, so we're making good progress. During today's stream, we'll learn more about Black Girls Code and their mission. We're going to hear from a real Ubisoft game developer. We'll catch up with the leading ladies of Mythic Quest and watch us battle to the death in Brawlhalla. I've been practicing, and let me tell you, it's not going to be pretty. Fingers crossed. I just don't want to be the first to die. You're not going to want to miss a single moment. So we've got a panel of amazing guests that are here with me, and I'm excited to introduce them to you. First, we have Joyelle Baker, the Partnerships Manager at Black Girls Code. Next, we have N Vanessa Niarco, a production manager at Ubisoft Toronto. We also have, have Imani Hakim, who plays Dana, a game tester in Mythic Quest. Followed by Ashley Birch, who also plays a game tester named Rachel. We've got Charlotte Nickdow, who plays Poppy, a creative director. And finally, we have Jesse Ennis, who plays Joe, an assistant on the show. Welcome, everybody. Hi. So thrilled Hi. to have Thank you here. Hi. Thanks and for having us. Cause. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, Joyelle, we're going to start with you. Tell us a bit about Black Girls Code. What is your mission, and how does the organization interact with the gaming industry? Yes, thank you for asking, Felicia. And I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you, everyone. A little bit about my life. I'm the Partnerships Manager at Black Girls Code. I'm the bridge in the organization connecting partners to provide resources to our students um, and to support GC programming, and we do everything from virtual to chapter-based programs, including workshops, enrichments, summer camps, code clubs, and alumni programs. That's oh, a mouthful. <laughs> um, but before I jump into the mission, I, I think it's really important to share a little bit about what inspired the idea, right? Um, being a fan of the show, watching Mythic Quest, a lot of uh, the the development behind the game is about inspiration and inspiring people. So at Black Rose Code, the vision was really derived from the need to cultivate spaces where black girls could see themselves reflected in STEM and tech. You know, as our founder's daughter developed a passion for computer science, she noticed there was a lack of representation and a lack of opportunities for her to acquire tech skills in environments where instructors and students look like her, right? So there also mm -hmm. weren't many spaces that introduce youth to tech entrepreneurship. And so determined to, to fill that gap, Black Girls Code was created. And you know, we started, we tell it like it is, we started in a basement in San Francisco with eight girls, six laptops. <laughs> You do the math, learning how to write lines of code. And uh, since our beginning, we've served over 20,000 girls worldwide. Wow. And uh, that leads me to our mission, which is really to increase the number of women of color in the digital space by empowering girls of color from as young as seven years old, right, to 17 years old, to become innovators in tech leader communities and, and builders of their own futures through exposure to computer science and technology. That is incredible. That is the reason we are all here today. Now, can you tell us about Black Girls Codes, Black Girls Codes upcoming goals? What are you all working on? What does the future look like? Yes. <laughs> so I'm excited to share, you know, our co core audience has been girls ages 17. And last year, pivoting to virtual, expanding our reach, we noticed there were a lot of uh, older girls and young women who would come back to BGC wanting to be a peer mentor to students going through the program, wanting to connect to opportunities. And so we rolled out our alumni program in an official capacity, um, and we're able to provide mentorship, internship, and connect young women to job opportunities who are 18, to five. 
Um, so that's something that we're excited to continue to build out. As we're talking now, we're in the midst of summer camps and we're continuing to expand that program. Um, and even when it's safe to go in person, once we determine when that is, we do plan to continue to offer a virtual format to make you know, learning how to code accessible and fun. Um, and so we wanna continue that work supporting our younger girls as well as our olders and our alumni. That's amazing. I'm so excited for the future and so excited to continue to raise funds to help you guys get there because that we need more of that for sure. Absolutely. Now, as you described, you know, Black Girls Code provides opportunities to girls that may not have seen a path forward for themselves in the tech world. The reality is that it can be hard to see yourself in the gaming industry or in any industry when you don't see yourself represented. So Vanessa, I'm gonna give this to you first. How have you been able to grow in your self-confidence and increase your skill set in spite of the lack of representation? Yeah, that's a great question, Felicia. And it's a pleasure to be here with you ladies. Joyelle as well from Black Girls Code. It's it's an it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I'd say the reality is there is that there is an unspoken luxury of not having to worry about how you will be perceived in a space based on the color of your skin or how you identify. And there are those who don't need to question their inherent worth or belonging in these industries because on some level, they've always seen themselves represented within them, you know, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Representation is good, uh, but the call to action for the industries is that we should all be represented. So something that's helped me to remember and sort of grow in my learned self-confidence and that hopefully will help black girls and women thinking of getting into the industry as well is knowing that they are worthy and deserving of being in the industry just by virtue of being themselves. You know, simply, not simply because they're magical as black women, which they, they absolutely are, or for, because we have the need for more representation in the industry, which we absolutely do, uh, but because they are uniquely themselves. And because they are uniquely human, they have unique lived experiences and thus a unique passion for games. And so the most important thing I find is that you show up as yourself, because when you do, that's when your voice begins to empower new stories and more nuanced games. Just the act of you standing boldly in who you are and how you identify is already a shift to the status quo that these industries need. And so something that I found that's helped in my learned self-confidence, especially not just in terms of you know gaining my skill set either through you know free trainings or a workshop or a mentor is sort of growing comfortable with the fact that right now um, in a lot of spaces you might be the only women of color or black women in the room and it's shifting that narrative and that mentality to say you know right now i might be the only but being only in a different way can be being first and being first just means that you've made a path for whoever is going to come second and third and fourth and so on. And trust me, they, they will come and it'll be in large part because they've seen themselves represented in you and uh, saw that they could do it because they've seen you there. Are you all taking notes? I just, that was so well said. I, I just, you, Vanessa. Oh, thank you. Vanessa, I, I just. Thinking that. <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you're watching this, just take out your notepad right now. Open the, the notes app on your phone because, yes. wow, we're dropping gems and we just got started. Now, Imani, I saw you nodding your head. Can you relate to what Vanessa was talking about? Oh, 100%. Um, there was so much in what you just said, Vanessa, that I, I just relate to. Um, um, I think it's really important to... Uh, as you said, acknowledge that you may be the only person, only one in the room that's sort of feeling filling that that space. But it's important to be the first one to pave the way for the people and the women that are coming after you. And um, and what we're doing right now, which is so important, I'm just like getting my life right now, just soaking up all the gems. Right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just it's so important because even uh, being able to portray Dana on Mythic Quest, um, this is a character that I have wanted to see represented for so long. And 
to me, that was sort of like a reminder what you were saying, Vanessa, and both you, Joelle, that I'm I'm in the midst of I'm I'm in the midst of doing it right now. I am that representation. Other young girls are looking at me and being like, oh, like I can be like Dana. And uh, so it's kind of cool to see how it comes full circle because when I was a little girl, I wanted that so badly and now we're doing it. I'm able to tell these stories and represent this woman that, you know, like she's just in, she's a gamer and she's in tech and it's, and it doesn't have to be smushed in your face and be like, this is a black woman in this space. She's just there and she's being authentically herself. Um, and those voices, um, they matter because when there's the same type of people in the space for too long and so uh for a while you just need that perspective you need that fresh perspective and i think uh it's really nice for me as an actress to be a part of that and it's, and it's really thrilling to be able to partner with you guys and and um push keep the conversation going and i'm um, spreading the awareness that you know we need more of us in this field and it's super exciting now imani that's amazing what you're when you're saying that you wanted to see this character for so long, were you aware of all of that when you approached, when, when you found this project, when this project found you, were you aware of all of that, uh, the representation, aware of kind of that weight, or did that come after? No, I'm always aware of it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm always aware of it. I think it's it's something that you can't really deny. You know, I, I am a Black woman, so I'm always thinking about uh, the the roles that I have played in the past and so for this particular uh show with mythic quest like dana wasn't written as a black woman she like it was i think it was an open ethnicity um casting call and so naturally when i'm reading the material i'm like this would be so epic if they went black <laughs> so cool um and and i'm sure that you know like they weren't like, oh, we need a, you know, a black one, but that you, you know, you, you cast to what works for the story. And I think this is the reality for so many of us, um, but we just never see it, you know, it's not talked about. And so, yeah, it's always on the far, far front of my mind. And yeah, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I have a responsibility that I am really embracing and um, yeah, it's just awesome. It's exciting to watch. It's exciting to watch in real time. I mean, I'm biased, but truthfully, <laughs> honestly, really. I have absolutely loved the season two of Mythic Quest. I've been telling my whole team, everybody who worked on it, I'm like, hey, P.S., this season is amazing. <laughs> um, every single character, I get a good gut laugh every episode. I had warm feelings. I had, like, my heart was warm. <laughs> Ashley, the episode of you and CW, I was like, what? I have no clues. <laughs> they, are, they are really going in. I'm loving it. Now this season, we see opportunities present themselves for all of your characters, from Dana advocating for herself to Joe following the power and seeking mentorship from Brad, which was one of my favorite storylines as well. Um, <laughs> what you. was the initial opportunity in your life? And Jesse, we'll start with you. But what was the initial opportunity in your own life that oh. you seized that led you to where you are today? Well, for me, it was definitely this moment that I, um, it's kind of corny, but I feel like I was like blessed by an angel in a way. I started taking acting classes when I was younger. My parents realized that it was the only place I could calm down. They were constantly getting grade reports from my teachers that were like, we just can't get her to sit still. She just, she's a social butterfly. If, if something goes by the, the window, it's all she cares about. We can't get her to focus. But then my theater <laughs> teachers were like, she's a leader. We can rely on her to get the other kids to focus. And so um, at a certain point, my parents were broke and they couldn't afford to send me to acting class anymore. And the director of the program called my mom and she was like, hey, I see Jesse isn't enrolled for the upcoming semester. And my mom said, well, we can't swing it. So we're going to try to you know, we'll bring her on when we can afford to. And this woman, Ellen Spindell, she said, um, you know, we'd love to extend a scholarship to Jesse because she gets the other kids to focus. And my parents were like, <laughs> well, are, are we talking about the same kid? 
Are you sure about that? Because her grade reports at school don't uh, don't mirror that at all. And because of her, I had this outlet for years, for 10 years. I went to free acting classes and it was totally the way that I found my voice and my purpose. And I feel really lucky that my parents knew to grab a hold of that opportunity and keep sending me semester after semester. My gosh, that's incredible. Now, Ashley, I see you nodding emphatically as well. What was an opportunity for you that you seized early on in your career? I was mostly nodding emphatically because, of course, Jesse would like rally the troops and be the leader of the theater. I yeah. mean, I was just, yes, this is on Very. brand for Jesse. Very on brand. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about our jobs, I think, is that it's it's a culmination of, of um, opportunities and failures always in tandem. Yeah, every yeah, yeah. every audition is an opportunity and a potential failure. Every day in the writer's room is an opportunity and a potential failure if a pitch doesn't get taken or whatever it is. Um, and so our line of work, it's just sort of comprised of those moments. They're sort of intrinsic into what we do. And um, it kind of forces you to sort of see the opportunities behind those moments, whether or not like you start having to get out of the success and the failure of it because it happens so much, the failure mostly, yeah, yeah. not the success necessarily, um, <laughs> but you sort of just have to derive meaning outside of of whether or not you get the gig or don't get the gig. Um, speaking of Jesse being the, the, the <laughs> troop leader, I remember her saying something about like, it was in the, I think it was in the, um, it was in the mix and match for Mythic Quest that it was just a the weird audition. vibe in the room, the audition, that Jesse was like, yeah. isn't it so cool that we get the opportunity to act right now? And all of us were like, right, yeah. Cause yeah. you could tell everyone was in their own heads. You know, it was a step further along in the process. So people were nervous, wanted to do a good job, but it becomes this thing of, right. You just have to find those moments of gratitude and, and what you can learn from the experience that isn't tied to whether or not you win. Um, and we are very fortunate in that we did kind of win that particular scenario. Um, a lottery. We very easily, we won the lottery. We very easily could not have. And I think that's the other thing yeah. as well. I mean, I, I, I've been, you know, I've gotten way, I've uh, not gotten way more parts than I have. And I've mm. gotten fired from jobs. I've gotten things shut down. I've pitched things that haven't gotten picked up and you learn a lot more from your failures sometimes than you learn from your successes. So, um, yeah. Did Ooh. I even ask your question? I just well, here, I blacked out. Here's the thing. You, <laughs> well, even if you didn't, you actually did the perfect segue into my next question. Great. So that was my intention. I, That's what I, I was think I'm for. about to be fired. You can just take this over. Um, <laughs> now, in line with what you're talking about, you know, we see some opportunities that are missed, right, in the show. Like when Rachel finds herself in the car with Ian, another one of my favorite scenes. So funny. But she freezes, right? Like, what opportunities have you missed? maybe in your own life, but actually opened up new doors in your careers. Charlotte, you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, I, sorry, I'm mildly distracted because there's a big spider on the wall. Just <laughs> Do you need a moment? <laughs> so this, Please, so right uh, now, how big? an example like, of Charlotte like, missing an opportunity. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, how big is it? Like, so I kind of, but I'm I've like, heard that. Do I've heard that the rodents, <laughs> the creatures in Australia are otherworldly. Do you need to handle that? I can no, ask I someone. Think... He's a non-poisonous one. He's just distracting. <laughs> I'm oh just imagining the, the hugest spider the, now. The, I can't imagine the like, is it like... Spider in my mind, the entire wall. Do you guys have daddy long legs in the state? Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's just a daddy long legs. He's just like... I feel really like you're really playing this down. I feel like yeah, you're really like, playing with now. I don't really believe you. <laughs> I, I feel like it's a monster spider. on the wall. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Okay. But if you need to step out and, and, and handle it, no, 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 feel I'm free. Good. I'm good. Um, <laughs> I grew up here. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Um, but what about so, missed opportunities in your career? Because you started out as a singer, yes? Yeah, I studied music for like 
all through my childhood and teens, I wanted to be a concert wow. clarinetist. And then I wanted to be a jazz singer of all things, but yeah. I wasn't very good. So okay. I, when I think, when I, I was still, when I was still very focused on trying to become a good musician, um, my dad has been an actor for my whole life. He's, um, he was actually one of the first Asian actors to be on Australian televisions, like back in the seventies, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but he, he had an agent who would like send me for jobs every so often. And it was through that, that I had the opportunity for my, my first, uh, acting job, which was like. A, a real fluke, I think, that I got it because I didn't really have much experience. Um, and I, honestly, that first job I didn't love. And so after that, I was like, okay, this isn't really, I, I want to go back to music. And I was actually one year into my first um, year of university studying music. And I would go for auditions sometimes. And it was like a real reprieve from this course that didn't was stressing me out because I because I was no good and um, <laughs> or not no good. <laughs> I don't think I ever had well the truth is I never had the commitment to it that I think you need to make it in any of these sorts of like creative fields you you need to know that it's what you want to do and I don't think I knew and at the time I got an audition for this show and it was the character was a urate, like a, a mixed race, like uh, Asian Australian girl. And I was like, I'd literally never seen that. This was, you know, more than 10 years ago, maybe 10 years ago. I'd, I'd like never seen that in, a, in an audition brief before, specifically my ethnicity. And I loved the script and I auditioned and I got called back and I got written for a chemistry read. And it was like, I bas they basically told me I had the role. And I kind of, I kind of freaked out a little bit. Like I kind of like the pressure of, of the opportunity got a little much for me. And they called me in for like a final audition where we were auditioning like the third character of the trio of leads. And the pressure was crushing. Like I, it was like the fact that I had been told, okay, yeah, you're good. You've got this kind of. Uh, did a number on my brain and I didn't do a great job and they ended up being like yeah we're gonna we're gonna give it to someone else we're gonna re-audition and find someone else because when it came to the crunch you weren't there and at the time I was devastated I was like I messed this up this was my one opportunity and I blew it and I was like, honestly, really, really unhappy for a long time. And it was that unhappiness that made me realize how much I loved acting and I was committed <laughs> to acting. Like I was still at uni and being like, wow, I've never been this upset about failing in this sphere, but this failure or missed opportunity here was something that made me feel like, oh gosh, I guess I really, really want this. And that kind of buoyed me into tr deciding to like go for it in, in this industry. And, you know, it turned out that there, there ended up being more opportunities and probably opportunities that um, were better for me in the long run. So I don't know, I try to think about that a lot when I, and I think it's like especially hard when you kind of feel like you you were the one that messed up the opportunity. You know, it's not necessarily like, oh, well, there were powers that be that you had no control over, but I had control over this and I couldn't. That always feels like it's easy to say, so therefore I don't deserve it. But I think that the big lesson I learned from that was you, humans mess things up sometimes and there's always something that you can take from it that's motivating. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Are y'all taking notes? We need notes? a snap option. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> like a button I know. Too, like, yeah. <laughs> you're dropping so many gems, Charlotte. That's so, that is so real. And you're right. And that level spider. of pressure is so intense. And, and you have pressure right now to be able to say all that with a spider there looking at you with all eight of its eyes. Now what's the status of the spider, please? You're a boss. Yeah. I can't see where it is anymore. It's oh, oh, that's the worst. Oh my know. god. We're gonna get that's 20 okay. minutes into this and we're just gonna see if Charlotte's screen goes black. We know why. 
<laughs> yeah, Charlotte's a goner. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Burn the whole house sure. down. <laughs> Burn it down. <laughs> oh, I also want to shout out. We have surpassed a thousand dollars. Ah, our exact number is one thousand one hundred and six dollars and five cents. Shout out to the five censor. Thank you. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are approaching our H. halfway mark. We're approaching our halfway yeah, mark. I'll so that's super exciting. Tiltify link. And Jesse, go for you get, go hit it. You guys say Yes, yes. I'm so excited to do this. We've got Heather H. She donated two hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you, Heather. Gary Gombot Garbanzo, a hundred dollars. Thank you so much, Gary. Woo, We've got Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Die or Dewey Nugent, who gave us fifty dollars. He said great initiative. Gonzalo gave us twenty dollars. Strength twenty four gave us fifty dollars. They said, "Love the show, ladies. Thanks for doing this stream. Good luck on the rest of the live stream. Thanks so much. We're gonna do our best. Let's see how this goes." Then Mr. E. Well gave us hundred bucks. He said, "I just love everything about what you all are doing. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help." So kind. Yes, we'll continue that. Oh, that's amazing. And then um, just a couple more. Jacob Thiesen sent us 100 bucks. Thanks, Jacob. And Garrett Thompson sent us $20. I wish people recognized how important this is. So thank you all. And we look forward to seeing who else donates. Yes. I really feel like we can surpass our goal. I feel like we can do better than yeah. 2500 I think oh, just I think a we shout out it. to the Ubisoft Toronto family because I heard some names in there that sound hey. a lot like they're from Ubisoft. Hey. So, A, hey, represent. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, Vanessa, we're gonna go to you. So Mythic Quest is supposed to depict your day-to-day -day life as a real life game developer, but how how much does it compare to your actual life? Were there parts of the show that were true to your experience or how does your job differ from what we see on TV? I think, so I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm a huge fan of the show. <laughs> but I think almost <laughs> fortunately that, it, um, you know, a lot of it isn't true to my experience. And I think that's a good thing uh, because, you know, I and sometimes be super wild. You know, Poppy season two sometimes just be super, super wild. And, you know, the way they see the other devs, you know, kind of, kind of problematic. So I think uh, in a lot of ways we're more like cold alliance, I would say. In that there's a lot of respect mm, no. for, for the devs. Um, there's a lot of respect for the creative process. I know we're not in the studio right now in Toronto, but we have much of a similar office space where, you know, there's not this weird hierarchy of like the creative director and the core directors are up here. Like it is like an op open office desk sitting situation. So I appreciated that. Um, in a practical sense as well, what you'll see a lot in season one is that Poppy's team um, as the programmers do a lot of the a lot of the the work like you'll see them working with like animations and things like that uh whereas personally in my experience uh working on far cry 6 there are just hundreds and hundreds of devs uh in different countries around the world you know we're working with uh, team members in montreal and shanghai and berlin and kiev of course toronto being the lead studio so there are usually bigger teams and I think that's one of the practical differences that I noticed. Um, one thing that I would say that the show does spectacularly well and is true to my experience is that when you're watching, uh, you know, Ian and Poppy and, and Dana and, and Rachel and, you know, even to an extent, uh, Joe as well, is that there is in the whirlwind of making games, this excitement and even to an extent, the frustration at the core of it is passion and a passion for making games and wanting to do something that you love, which is making games and sharing that with other people and other players who love these games and want to make and want to play them as well. And I think that's very true to my experience uh, at UB Toronto, where all of us as devs are really just in love with games and want to make a great game and want to share that love and passion with other people as well and other people who love playing games and so i think that really spoke to me and every time i watch the show and you know every time someone's yelling at someone or you know super excited uh, about about hera or titan's rift it reminds me that there's you know a team of us back home that are just really excited for our game to launch and you know we feel very similarly oh i love that i love that now joyelle what types of opportunities 
or career paths do students go into after being in the Black Girls Code program? No, I love that question. You see I'm beaming here. I'm not a game developer, but I am a gamer. And I think um, something that I dream about for our girls is just the one day when I'll be able to play one of our girls' games that they develop in the future. Yeah. Um, but in terms of what types of job opportunities and career paths our, our girls and the young women go into, they are software engineers, UX, UI designers, game developers, right? They go into leadership roles. Um, they also pursue tech internships. And something I wanted to say earlier is that, um, you know, just like, uh, also adding to what Vanessa and Amani were saying, you know, the importance of allowing young girls, young black women to show up authentically as themselves, we take the holistic approach of nurturing all of their interests. Our girls are coding, but our girls are also interested in entrepreneurship. You know, we're teaching financial literacy. The girls are interested in starting their own businesses, developing their yes. own businesses. And so, there are many, many career pathways from BGC. It's like, how do we nurture that? See our girls as holistic beings, right? And yes, black girl magic. And also we're not these magical, mythical creatures, right? We need that nurturing and support. Gosh, that's incredible. And I love how you say that you wanna support the holistic person and their various interests because we're going to switch and start talking about finding passion in your work and how you all were able to do that. And Jesse, I want to tr transition to you because I learned that on Mythic Quest, some of you were in the writer's room or even directed episodes. And so, and so you were more involved in the show. How did those opportunities come about? And what was that process like? That came directly from Rob McElhenney and Megan Gans and David Hornsby, and honestly, Ashley Birch, who really advocated for me in a lot of ways and made me feel supported. Um, but our show is really unique in that our showrunners want to open doors to us that haven't previously been opened. And it's really like just an open invitation for anyone who wants to join the different aspects and different departments. So. I was able to sit in on the writer's room and I wasn't a writer. I didn't write an episode, but I was there. She I was, was a writer. Stories. I was, <laughs> I influenced a couple of things. I wrote a couple of jokes, but more than anything, hey. I got to be there and, and watch how these incredible stories were actually sculpted and, and what that process is like. And it gave me a lot of confidence in my own ability to be a storyteller. And then Rob welcomed all of us to shadow him as a director. And so we got an opportunity to direct, to direct, second unit, which means like some of the interstitial stuff that you see, you know, an establishing shot of a building or some cars driving through a tunnel, stuff like that, which may seem easy, but is really great training for when you actually have the hard stuff to direct. And then, you know, Charlotte and I got to edit a scene. We edited the scene that you see um, in, I think it's episode six, maybe episode five, when Imani or, or rather Dana comes and meets uh, little Nick Dow and, and Rob on the side of the road <laughs> with Rachel and they all have a very funny exchange. That scene was heavily influenced by Charlotte and myself and that was a, a thrill and I was really grateful for this this training opportunity that we were given. But I actually had a question for Joyelle based on what she was just saying, which is, and, and it ties into what I'm saying too, you know, I feel like I've been given so many opportunities to train and prepare for this job. What are the best ways for young women to prepare for a career in tech? Yes, that is a great question. I would say number one, mentors. Um, it definitely helps to have mentors. Um, as someone who has been in the tech space as a non-technical person, but always being tech adjacent, um, I would say I could not have, be, have been here today if it was not for mentors. Um, I would also say, of course, Black Girls Code, um, we we work with girls from as young as seven to teen. And so a lot of intro courses, but in addition to doing workshops, we also do things like mock interviews, right? How to actually interview for a technical role, right? That's something yeah. we talk about. Um, we talk about career pathways, right? How to build your resume, because it's one thing to, you know, join a workshop and learn how to do it. It's another thing to learn how to 
navigate all the nuances of the tech industry. And it is definitely a, a, quite a challenge to do that alone. So those are some of the ways that I would, I would advise. And do you have, do you have any advice for how to find a mentor? I feel like I've been really lucky in that I've met mentors at work and I just kind of latch onto them and never let them go get their phone numbers and call them when I've got questions, but is there a way that's a little less weird or is that the way to do it? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. I will say, uh, you know, for those of us who have LinkedIn, that's been great, but for younger folks, I think um, just be open to, to learn and understand that mentorship is a, a relationship. So you have someone who's interested and curious and learning about someone and someone who's truly invested in that individual's growth. And so, I mean, I would definitely, I, I enroll people to be my mentors all the time. <laughs> I'm like, I can learn a lot for you. But I think the best way is just, you know, just be curious um, and, and don't be afraid. I would encourage, young girls of color, young black girls to not be afraid to say, hey, I see that I can learn something for you and I want you to be my mentor, right? It's okay to be bold in that approach because something that, you know, I was told growing up was closed mouths don't get fed. So you had to speak up, mm. be bold in that. Yeah. I'll, no, that's amazing. I'll say too that I think um, a little bit different now because there aren't conventions but i do know that getting involved in the games industry especially in technical roles technical roles are always needed and at conventions game companies usually have well they'll definitely have a presence especially if they're showing a game but usually they have a presence in a different hall specifically for meeting folks that want to work for their company and so i think that sort of attitude that you're saying joelle of just going up and being like hey, I wanna do this, be my mentor is awesome. And that there are places you can go specifically where folks that you wanna work with are going to be gathering. So if you mm -hmm. combine yes. finding those sp those spaces with just believing in yourself enough to go up and say, hey, help me. Um, yeah. I think that's really a powerful combination. That's mm -hmm. huge, that's huge. I hope y'all wrote that down. Yeah. <laughs> hope y'all still taking notes. Hope y'all didn't forget. Uh, shout out! We are over. We are over our halfway point. Woo! I don't have a bell, but yeah. I'm our number at eighteen hundred fifty-one dollars and five cents. Woo! So thank you, and everybody. While we're here, Jesse hit got it. A, we've got a special. We've got a special birthday announcement. It's Kat's birthday. She just donated twenty dollars, and she asked if we would specifically say happy birthday. Kat, I got these balloons for you. Happy <laughs> you, Kat. Happy birthday, Kat. Happy birthday, Kat. Happy birthday, Kat. Happy birthday, Kat. Steph Squash donated a hundred dollars. She said, "Love this initiative." We've got a handful of anonymous donations. One person donated a hundred dollars. Another donated two hundred dollars. We've got an anonymous donor who gave us five dollars. All of this matters. Jerome gave us five dollars. They said, "You are cool." Steph C donated <laughs> and said, "So happy to support this amazing organization." And go UB. And then uh, we've got many more coming up. So donate, and I promise I'll say your name. <laughs> Dope. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Now, Joyelle, you were talking about the importance of being creative and being interested in multiple things. And that's a perfect transition to you, Vanessa, because you started out actually in marketing, right? So you kind of had a non-traditional way of getting into the games industry and getting to where you are now. What was that transition process like? Yeah, so I started off, it was actually a co-op, a co-op placement uh, while I was in my third year of university um, and I had a co-op placement at Microsoft. And I think this also goes to uh, what Ashley and Joyelle were saying about growing comfortable and advocating on your own behalf and how powerful that was. Uh, because my original co-op placement at Microsoft uh, was just in general marketing. Uh, but I had a manager uh, whose name is Karina Vivas and She's a director at uh, Microsoft now. So, yeah. hey, Karina, um, who, <laughs> you know, believed in me. And even though I, you know, I had this love for games and I shared that with her, uh, there actually wasn't really an opportunity that was specifically there carved out for an Xbox digital marketer. But because she believed in me, because I was advocating for myself, uh, I became the Xbox digital marketer. And a year before I graduated, I started working that full time and then going to school sort of to, to finish up my degree. And once I became the Xbox digital marketing manager, I realized that 
I wanted to have more of a hand in how these games are made and how these stories were told and, you know, wanting to see somebody like myself either, you know, portrayed as a character or a story that I could relate to. And so the move to game dev, I'd say was made uh, easier by the fact that there were initiatives such, like, such as career fairs, uh, such as the Ubisoft graduate program, which is what I did after I graduated school, after working as an Xbox, Xbox digital marketing manager. Uh, and the other thing I'd say is learning how to sort of centralize my talents that I had and the skills that I developed on the job as transferable skills to get into game dev. And I think that's one of the greatest things about being in game dev is that uh, there are a lot of technical roles, but there are also a lot of roles that aren't technical. And a lot of the things that you learn on the job for myself, I was managing campaigns. I was managing games as well. And in a sense, in our new releases, some of them having to be from Ubisoft, others not. And then just by way of being able to manage that, having those problem solving skills, having those creative thinking skills was a good transition for me to advocate for myself when I started going into game dev and developing those roles. And so I'd say for other people who may not have the skills or think they don't have the skills, or maybe they're still just trying to figure out what they're good at, uh, you, even if you don't have a mentor, as long as you're advocating for yourself, it is okay to start small, you know, and you don't have to be an expert at something or even be good at it to start, right? You know, producers and creative directors are not born overnight uh, by any means. And you, you know, you see that uh, transition on Mythic Quest a lot with a lot of the characters. And so like before when I started at Ubisoft Toronto in production, I had no experience being a first AD or shoot manager, but I found a mentor who was willing to train me. Her name is Caroline Pinot, and she was willing to teach me and train me. And by the end of near shipping the game now, I was leading uh, Far Cry gameplay shoots. And so you just have wow. to be willing to try and have that passion and drive to keep going if it's something that you really, really want to do. Vanessa, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, Are you I'm just trying to keep the snap train like, going. I feel like Listen, I'm just mentor to... if you're not. That was all amazing. You know, it's a goal. It's a goal. One day, hopefully, hopefully I hope to, yes. to mentor a young, young girl too. One day soon, Vanessa. Yeah. You want to mentor me? I feel like. No, Ashley. Could we, could we, you know, 360 mentorship? I'm down for it. <laughs> you guys, we just beat our We're goal. We're so close. Hey! No, we just beat it. Hey! We're at two thousand five hundred and two dollars. You guys are Yay! amazing. Yay! You guys are Thank amazing, you. man. And we still have over an hour left on our stream. We're about to start gameplay, but before we get into that, we're gonna watch a clip from the finale of Mythic Quest Season Two, titled "What Is It." We can just reenact it also. If you remember your, you remember lines. your lines, Charlotte, Imani. <laughs> okay, well, while, while they cue, it's okay. While they, while they cue that up, Joyelle, now we've already beat our goal, which is amazing. Actually, we're at, are we at 2,700? Yeah. So we're, just, we're, going yeah. Up. we're going up. We're going up. But what else can people do to support Black Girls Code? Obviously, we're obsessed with the organization, and money is <laughs> one way to donate and be a part of what you guys are doing. But how else can we get involved? Yes. Uh, so, of course, as we've been talking about mentorship, um, we have uh, official mentoring programs that run from six to eight weeks. Um, we also, I, I want to give a shout out to our core teams and our 14 U.S. chapters, and our 15th in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, we have wow. core teams all over the map, yes, who show up uh, for our girls um, and their families, their parents, the people who take care of them. And we have volunteers um, who participate in chapter-based programs. So if you're in any one of those 15 chapter cities, Please do connect. Um, we would love to, you know, like just work with you and get some local support for our girls. Um, I think also if you have a technical background, we always appreciate um, people who can show up. Our core curriculum covers everything from web dev to game design and development, robotics, circuits, etc. 
And we also appreciate our non-technical folks. Um, Vanessa, it's really exciting to hear that you had a start in marketing. We always love to have marketing folks show up, work with our girls to learn how to pitch their products, design, right? Those are all important. Um, so please sign up to volunteer, sign up to be a mentor, uh, sign up to support our curriculum development. We need it and we appreciate it. That's dope, that's dope, that's dope. Okay, We're, clip is ready. This clip is of Dana. She's about to pitch her grouchy goat idea to Ian and Poppy. I think it's a dog. Why is it limping? Maybe it's injured. So the game is about a sad, injured dog? I have no idea. It's a goat. It's sh I know. And yet you kept working on it. Why? I don't know. I just, I just see it. And if I were to tell you that it was shit as well, would you believe me? Yes. But would you stop working on it? Yes. No. I just think it could be so cool because look, yeah, 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 if you. Yeah. All right. We'll get you into programming school. Not Berkeley, somewhere reasonable. Local, MQ will pay for it. And we're gonna keep you under contract so that when you graduate, we don't look like assholes when you go and work somewhere else. I'm sorry. This is all happening really fast. Did you say that you like the game? Are you not paying attention? We think the game is shit. But you don't, and that's the only thing that matters. These people out here, they will crumble the first time someone rejects one of their brilliant ideas, which happens all day, every day. Now, are you gonna make anything good? I don't know. But you sure as aren't gonna quit until you do, obviously. All right, well, get out. We're busy. Goodbye. Oh, 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 right, yes, thank you. Wow, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh. I love that clip. Okay. <laughs> Love it. I have to say, I watched the final episode with my parents the other day, which is I just got back to Australia. So it's actually the only episode ever that I've been able to actually watch with my parents in the same room. Wow. Uh, that was their favorite scene of, I think, like, it's the so season. good. They, they oh. laughed so much, and you feel like so excited for Dana at the end of it. You just play it so perfectly, Imani. I love it. Oh yeah, so <laughs> the way you say, are you saying you like the game? Like the way you say it is yes. so good. <laughs> With the absolutely not. <laughs> but we talked so much about the, we talked so much about the importance of mentorship, right? And here we've got two people who are standing up for Imani and basically without even knowing it, being like, I'll be your mentor, right? Like they are paving a way for you. And so our final question to everybody is about mentorship. Did you have a sponsor or mentor? Some of you already named it. So Charlotte, I'd love to start with you. Um, but did you have a sponsor or a mentor that helped helped to get helped you to get where you are today? And what kind of advice would you give to someone who doesn't have a mentor right now? I think, I mean, what I was gonna say has kind of already been said a little bit, but I feel like I've had a number of mentors throughout my career. Um, before that, I would say that my mentor was definitely my dad, which I'm so lucky that I had this person in my life for my whole life that that believed in me, but was always realistic in the, the advice that he would give me. You know, it, I think that sometimes uh, what you need from a mentor is someone who has has experience in the thing that you want to do, has maybe some experience in knowing what that might be like for you personally. But I think also that believes in you enough that they can um, give you the tough advice when you need it too. Um, and then I think when I start, when I was lucky enough to start working, I had a bunch of different mentors throughout my career that I can definitely see a trajectory of when I first started working in this space, feeling like I needed to like shut up, do my job and like not make trouble and not ask anything of anyone more than what they were already giving me. And then I think slowly, slowly, I've gained the confidence to actually start asking questions or saying like, 
hey, can, can we like have lunch together? Can I ask you some things about the job? Like when I've admired someone having the confidence to tell them that I admire them and people really like that, it turns out. And then I think <laughs> like that all the way through to Mythic Quest where, I mean, our bosses, our leaders on Mythic Quest are like really upfront with being like, hey, if you want to know something, if you want to learn something, ask like we're here to support you and to be perfectly honest it took me a while before i felt confident in in doing that i think we really have it drilled into us that asking anything of anyone is making trouble when in actuality what mythic quest has really taught me is a lot of people that are successful or a little further along in their path than you are really excited by the opportunity to support you and teach you and so i feel really grateful that i've landed in this like headspace now of actually being able to confidently and excitedly ask for help and ask for advice and i wish if i could give myself 10 years ago any advice it would be like get there faster like get to the point where you don't feel so afraid to ask faster I love that. I love that. And Joyelle, what about you? Well, I Did you have, have a mentor? Very, yes, I've had many mentors. Um, I've been really fortunate to have a lot of extraordinary teachers. I would consider my mom a mentor, um, constantly giving that tough love, but also that support <laughs> and hug when I need it. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'll share, you know, one of my greatest mentors has been my godmother, an incredible black woman, an incredible teacher. Um, I, I remember in school, I was always making honor roll, 90s and above, and uh, she was my fifth grade teacher, my godmother. <laughs> and we had to memorize a Langston Hughes poem. And I kind of, I was like, I got this. I didn't have it. <laughs> and my godmother, my fifth grade teacher, was the first person to ever give me a failing mark. <laughs> it's a story to say. It's funny, but it also, like, oh, I, it pushed me to be like, okay, I'm really talented, but I also got to put the work in. I got to put the effort in. And I have all these incredible mentors and these women in my circle cheering for me, but also holding me accountable also guiding the way. Um, I would also say, you know, I had incredible mentors in high school to um, pursue my creative passions as well. I'll name a couple. So my aunt, Camille Elvey, my mom, Tanisha Baker, um, my high school creative writing teacher, Chris Hood. And I even have mentors here at Black Girls Code, uh, Kenya, Ola, Anisha, the list goes on. And I just want to thank all these incredible individuals because at times where, you know, I didn't know if I could or if I, you know, I didn't know. I felt unsure. I had these people cheering me on. So thank you. That's amazing. It takes a village. It takes a village. Imani, what about you? Did you ever have a mentor, anyone who kind of poured into you? And what advice would you give someone who wants a mentor but doesn't have one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to echo what Charlotte was saying, I've been privileged enough to have many mentors along my career. And the mentors that stand out to me right now are uh, two of my acting coaches. And sometimes when you are in the process and you're unable to see where you are and you feel like you're so much further from the goal and also like mentorship is just very helpful because sometimes um you just don't know what you're what you're capable of what you're bringing to the table and so sometimes you need someone to hold up a mirror to you and, and you know reflect back your potential yes and yes. all of that and um so absolutely if you don't have a mentor get one um even if it's within your friend group uh mentors don't have to be someone that you feel like that's on a totally different level you just want to surround yourself with people who elevate you and help you um uh just push yourself you know and um 
yeah, and I have that. I have that with my coaches. I have it with uh, these women that I'm, I'm talking to right now. Um, it's just really, it's really important to have a community of people that you can sort of uh, rely on and lean on um, that can help you along the way because it's a, it's a challenging journey and you, you need your tribe, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just heard something really great, which was that um, the best way to help someone grow is to support them. That's the first thing. You support them emotionally, you support them in how you communicate with them, and then to challenge them, but that the support is the first step. They have to feel supported. Otherwise, it's just criticism. If you're just challenging someone without yeah, the yeah. support, it's not actually helpful. Mm. But so finding someone in your life, it could be your sister, it could be anyone you know, someone in your class who supports you and then also challenges you will help will help you become a better person. And as somebody who likes to do that, it makes you a better person too, if you can find ways to shine your light on other people. Yeah. Gems dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, your turn. We'd love to hear from you. Oh God, everyone said really great stuff already. Oh. Say something uh, new, come on. <laughs> oh God, um, <laughs> mentors. <laughs> Let's talk about them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, like these ladies said, uh, I've, I've also been really, really lucky to have um, a lot of amazing mentors in my life. And something that Imani said that I loved so much was that you really do need that mirror sometimes, especially folks, you know, I think everyone has insecurities, but I think often folks that, you know, identify a certain way or look a certain way because of their uh, their race, their gender, their orientation have more difficulties with confidence or believing in themselves sometimes based on culture and society being shit sometimes. And so you need those people outside of you that can show you how great you are. And are um, to steal a word from RuPaul, to speak to the saboteur in your brain and tell them that yes. they don't know everything. Um, yes. so I, I love what you said about that E cause I think it's so true. It's not just about, okay, this person is in this realm of work that I want to get into. So I choose them as my mentor. Most of my mentors that I've found have been emotional supports more than anything. They've been able to give wisdom regardless of, I mean, one of my mentors right now was, is my college professor, Allison, um, who just helps me with troubles in my life that I'm going through that impact, you know, how I am in relationship and in my work. And um, we don't do the same thing, but she's still my mentor because she really helps me with those emotional blockages that come up that also come up in my work and help me grow as a person. That's huge. That's huge. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ashley. And Jesse, did you want to add anything? I know you named your mentors earlier, but if you want to drop any more gems, girl. More shout out. I, I've got plenty, but I would love to um, shout out some of our, our newest donors. Yes, let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, great. We've got Matthew Proctor who donated $50 and he said, amazing to see the black girls code changing the world one line of code at a time. Stephanie gave us $20. BWS family gave us $20 and said, we support you. We've got a couple anonymous donations. Somebody said, as a woman, I would love to work with more women in game dev, bring them on in. MJ gave us $200. She said, or they said, great initiative, great panel. And I know great things will come from this. Adam S gave us $50. X and Morsi gave us $500, which I think really set us over the edge there for a sec. Uh, then Max M gave us $100.95, which just goes to show that this person was really bugging out about the five cents. I also happen to know this is my fiance. He said, you go, <laughs> here's, here's to 1 million hashtag future tech bosses by 2040. Thanks, Max. He's over there. Um, Joni gave us $100 and she said, love Mythic Quest and love the work by Black Girls Code. And, um, and then we've got Ashley Bosch is. I feel like that might be lightly influenced by you, Ashley, but maybe not. They gave us $40. <laughs> Jen gave us 50 She said, love this. And the push for nurturing representation in game dev. We've got Heart Saying Hi. Heart Saying Hi. I can read. She gave us $10. <laughs> Emily and Otis gave us $50. So thank you all so much. And please keep donating. We've changed our goal to $3,000 and we just, we just it. reached it. So, uh, so, so is that from you? 
your mentor, Vanessa? I saw the name, Carolyn Pinot. Was that your mentor? Oh yeah! Oh my gosh, that was <gasps> her. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh, thank you, Carol. Cute. We've come How full amazing. circle. Yeah. Full oh, circle. I really oh, that. yeah. Full circle. And that's perfect. Thank you. That's so perfect because yeah, Vanessa, we're gonna Vanessa, keep inspiring around you. We love. Oh, love from your mentor. Oh. Okay. Full oh. circle moment. Oh. I wasn't expecting. <laughs> That's amazing. That's okay. Touch my heart. Oh, <laughs> got me. Uh, Vanessa, we're gonna we're gonna end with you. Um, who were some of your mentors? You've already named them. Or if you want to give advice to people who need a mentor and don't have one right now. Yeah. So I did name a few: uh, Karina Vivas, uh, Caroline Pinot, Michelle Choi as well. Also, the women I work with every day, Steph Quash, Nicola Jones, uh, we work in similar roles, but you know, they are still my my mentors and in, in the fact that they elevate me to want to be a better person and challenge myself and really have made it possible for me to see myself in the industry, not because of the work I do, but deserving as just being me. Um, and if I could give advice to people that are maybe searching for a mentor, I think Ashley and Amani had mentioned this as well, is that they don't necessarily have to be within the industry that you're striving to. Uh, they can be people that really just set you on the right course, especially when it comes to, to work. Because I think as black women, we're made aware very early on that sometimes we'll have to work twice as hard to get half as far. And I want to convey that even though game dev is hard work on its own, and then on top of that, yes, there might be times that you're the only woman of color in the room. Um, and you may even encounter people that you feel like you need to prove yourself to. You never have to prove yourself to anyone. And I feel like the best mentors are people that show you that and can tell you that even if they're not in the field that you are trying to go to. And specifically, if you're trying to be in game dev, I can say personally that our need for you in the industry isn't determined by you having to work twice as hard. And any job, regardless of the industry, I'd argue, that would make you do that isn't deserving of your energy and what you have to offer. And you know there are many, many, many spaces within tech and within game dev that will see your inherent value. And so I think a core part of what we've been talking about with self-confidence and you know learning, uh, like learning your self-worth and being in the industry is, you know, acknowledging the value, your value and your worth and, and treating yourself accordingly. I think one of the best advice that I've gotten uh, from my mentors so far is that uh, career progression and uh, personal care and self-preservation are not complete opposites. You know, you don't have to work yourself to the bone to, to be successful. And a part of being successful is also caring for yourself and being able to do so, so that you can be a mentor and you know care and, and support other people as well. <sighs> yes, uh, I feel emotional. Yes. I don't no, know if it was yes. I, <laughs> yes. it's so good. Because I mean, it even hits me on a personal personal note. I mean, this is the conversation that we've had today is something that I have wanted to be a part of. Um. And it's just so cool to be able to do this with all of you and to hear your stories. You're all in different industries, nonprofit, tech, gaming, entertainment. But the thing that all of these have in common is that, you know, we're kind of in the minority and kind of whatever, whatever that means for us, right? Like some people can say that the stacks are, you know, the odds are stacked against us, right? But I'm just, personally, I'm so inspired by your stories. And again, I hope that everyone watching us has been taking notes. And I hope that this has been helpful uh, and encouraging to you. Uh, this is a great way, the best way to end my Monday. Um, so I just want to thank Imani, Ashley, Jesse, Charlotte, Vanessa, and Joyelle. Thank you so much for being here, for being so transparent, um, for sharing your heart, for sharing your journey and for paving that way for people who are coming behind us right to get inspired to, for being that first person um for whenever you maybe felt imposter syndrome for you know over for talking to the saboteur in your head right um for, for <laughs> stepping out and doing what you're doing right you're all you all are being your authentic selves and inspiring others to do the same and i mean if i could hug you i could i won't there's a little bit of distance but um <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna transition i don't know how to do this smoothly um but we're gonna great. transition i love it <laughs> 
Oh, I've got so, I've got a good transition. It's one thing I I didn't say yet that I keep thinking I needed to say, which it. is, and it comes back to what we were talking about being in that chemistry read and me being like, isn't this great that we're all getting to act together? There is this strange rumor that we're all supposed to be competitive with each other or that it's a competition. You got to com be competitive to get to the top. That is bullshit. I'm just going to say right now. Oh, am I not supposed to swear? I've done it again. Um, I did it already. <laughs> maybe I should. I'll donate a little bit for every. I don't know. We'll just keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> Turn into a swear but jar. So, uh, <laughs> but so it's not a competition. What we're talking about, like these three women from Mythic Quest are my mentors. The four of us are a mentorship all together. And I love that about us. And I don't think that you need to be competitive. I think you need to have so drive. And it's totally different. You can link arms with all the other women or other people in your field, and you can you guys can come together to the top. That's not there's not just one little spot at the top of the mountain. So um, support the people that you're yes. alongside. Make friends in those awkward waiting rooms when you're about to go in and yes. do an interview or an audition. Find ways to create mentorships in your friendships, and don't get lost in this silly competitive thing that we keep. So Try, you know, people keep, keep on trying to talk about competition. It's a it's a waste of your time. So just don't do that. Yeah. And instead of being and, and then immediately going against what I just said, I'm gonna win all of the games and this is a competition. <laughs> and here you we go. Wish. Well, I was just gonna say, let's Can keep the competition it? in video game land. We'll keep it there, <laughs> not in real life. Yes. So I'm gonna introduce our game master for the rest of our time together. Chastity Vicencio is gonna be our game master and she's gonna run Brawlhalla for us. Again, I'm just hoping that I'm not gonna be the first person to die. And um, we'll have some questions. If you wanna put some questions in the chat, we will be looking at those. So feel free, we're gonna keep it light and fun uh, because I know how competitive y'all are in when it comes to video games. <laughs> not, not, in re not in real life, but video games, it gets pretty oh, intense. Yeah. I'm so not going to take it away. Trash talking for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be gonna trash talking. It's, it's definitely officially. a shit tone here, but it's it's all in good fun. We all love each other, but you know, every every woman for themselves. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, it's <laughs> time for a good old fashioned rumble in Brawlhalla. If you're not familiar, Brawlhalla is a free to play fighting game, and it's full cross play among all the platforms. You got Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, iOS, Android. It's on all of that. So we're gonna play and we're gonna do a four v four match. So while everyone's getting set up and getting Brawlhalla ready. I'm just to let you know what modes we're playing today. So first, we're going to have all eight of us playing in a 4v4 match. And then we're going to play the new crew battle mode that was recently added with the addition of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which happened recently. So that's going to be fun. The crew battle mode is similar to the team stock battle. So two teams are going to face off, but the last team standing wins. But the different thing is that only one opponent from each team is on the screen at one time. So once a player is knocked out, mm. another player from the same team is brought on for the next stock. So that's going to be next mm. after the 4v4. And then we're going to play some Kung Fu, which is a lot of fun. It's like Rayman soccer. So basically, uh, we've got the two teams. <clears throat> and so I, I think I'll get Felicia and Joyelle back in for that. It's fun. It's fun. It's like it's, it's soccer. So there's going to be a <laughs> net on each side. A ball is going to be dropped in the middle, and the main objective is to attack the ball and just shoot it into the net to score points. So you uh, you score to seven points, and most uh, when you do damage on the ball, the further it'll fly. So that'll be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Are we all in? Okay, it looks yeah. like we are. Okay. Oh my Ready gosh. for battle. <laughs> Go ahead and pick a map, everybody, and then we will get started. But yeah, this is going to be a 4v4 match. Uh, we're all just having fun. But I'm terrified. The best team. You're the best team. <laughs> I'm gonna for your game, Charlotte. At three thousand two hundred ninety dollars. I'm always the rock. You know. <laughs> you know <it's> always <laughs> <laughs> oh my no gosh! I'm so scared. Oh, I'm immediately oh afraid. Oh, oh, oh we already learned it. Oh my god! Go. Okay. <laughs> It's How do you madness. focus? It's chaos. It's hard to talk to <laughs> play this game. I should have a switch. I think I'm so fighting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm pressing buttons, but I guess I have oh to Oh my gosh. 
So, oh, Harrison in the chat will be Ooh, taking questions from the chat as well um, during this hour. So, go ahead and cheer on your favorite player or favorite team. And be sure to keep those donations rolling in. If you type in exclamation mark donate, you'll get the link on where to donate oh. to keep those donations rolling in. Oh, boy. Come on. It is crazy out here. Oh, this oh, is no. insane. How did I fall? I died. <laughs> oh. Really? Oh my gosh. I feel like <laughs> I'm just button mashing. I that's what I'm doing. No. I don't have any strategy. Oh, oh no, the rock did I die? Oh no. Oh no, oh, no. Oh, he's 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 back. Oh boy. This is chaotic. You just fall through the middle. Yeah, this is really chaotic. That's what? Like bird. Twice. I what? Is it you even? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were dinosaurs. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Okay. Whoa. Did I do oh, that? No. No! I just kick somebody to like Kingdom Come. That was great. <laughs> what is this? Oh Did it. boy. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh. Y'all are kind of ruthless though first. too. Like oh. it's intense out this here. This is a warm-up. This is a warm-up, so <laughs> this doesn't count. Get out of here, Ashley. Oh. <laughs> you just jumped off the edge. It happens. My worst enemy is myself because I keep like throwing myself off the map and oh, not being able to jump back up. I'm the shark. Who are you? That's right. Obviously, I'm the shark. Obviously, I never thought I'd be fighting the rock. Oh no! No! Oh my no, God, no, no, no! 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 Oh. Come on, jump back! Oh. I think I died. Oh no! Oh no! I died. Oh my God! <laughs> I died. Okay, oh. we. Oh, oh wait! Man is oh no! Oh, <laughs> what? Um, I'm back here, Rayman. This is. I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Why you just can't run away? We've got four oh. people left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh, Rayman, I don't no. Think <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh let me. Oh, I only hit you once. <laughs> Oh no! Ooh, the shark is just camping. Yeah, I could only run for so long. Just <laughs> oh, oh, you have another life? Oh my god. It's taking oh, three of us so long to kill you. Like an embarrassing amount of time. Oh to my god. <laughs> I just want to get hidden. One hit, so I need. At this point. I think I gave up. Wow, we Wait, still who is Four players left. Good huh? job. Good job. Huh? Uh -oh. Who is X? Oh no! Oh, Finn! Finn, no! <laughs> Am I dead? Oh no, I'm still alive. Oh. No, you still have one. Wow. Rayman has one oh, life left. We can do this. <laughs> oh my money? gosh. Okay. okay. Rayman and Finn have one stock left. She got it's me. gonna be really embarrassing <laughs> if so it was a 3v1. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Three oh left. boy. Oh we'll boy. Be the champion oh my god. This, round. this is intense. Which team will come out on top? Oh no, Rayman. <laughs> Imani, that you oh my gosh. Do. What? Yeah. You're good oh at this God. game. This is good. Oh, this is boy. good. This is a good matchup. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, you got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't no. fall. Oh, no. I thought there was going to be another one. Uh -oh. Okay, okay, uh -oh. let her get it! Oh, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, uh, I just really won! <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh my god. <laughs> I just really, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Dog breaks of the two here. testers playing together. Get out. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's so cute. No! You I, killed oh, her! You lost oh, her! No, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm oh, here. You're oh, you're fine. Wait, wait, no, okay. never mind. Still there, still oh, there. Oh. oh, you have another life? Oh, this is... Oh no! There's two of us. But now, Why now you all have alive? one stock left. <laughs> oh, come on, Elaine! Jump, jump, nice. jump! No! <laughs> Good save. Well, we're fine. That's stuck. No. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> it's gonna be loud. Oh, hey. oh, hey. oh wow, we were looking at each other, Imani. We were like. <laughs> 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 Ooh, red team that wins. Intense. Congrats to the red Ooh, team. Ooh, okay. That was that warm up. Didn't count. Right. That's right. fine. Didn't count. <laughs> yeah, that didn't yeah. count. Yeah. Just um, warming up. Yeah. Okay, we and do have a now question. Blue team, where are y'all at? What happened? Oh, you know? What's up, Felicia? Did we disappear? <laughs> oh, and um, we have a question from the chat from the Mythic Quest Go ladies. 
Okay. Did working on Mythic Quest give you guys a greater appreciation for gaming as a whole? Yes. Yes. We're, My respect. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley's like, yeah, I'm waiting for the answer. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm deep in the. Uh huh. I'm, I'm Ash, very, very was entrenched. One of the people so. that helped me gain more respect for gaming as a whole because you already were so entrenched and you knew so much about this community and that world. And then, you know, the thing that I always say is one of the things that helped. I mean, I wasn't really a gamer before this. You you probably can't tell from my Brawlhalla skills because they're <laughs> that good. <laughs> um, but uh, I feel like the thing that I sort of discovered about gaming when, when I started researching for the role was like, you know, you're getting to usually you're playing a character, you're in a different world, you're living out a story that isn't your own. It's basically like acting, except you don't have to sit in a makeup chair for an hour before you do it. Uh, <laughs> and that was like, it got me to like really appreciate how cool it is just as an art form. That's amazing. Anybody That's, else uh... not a gamer when you started? Or sign on to Mythic Quest? Or was everybody a gamer other than Charlotte? Oh, Jesse, you're on mute. We can't, mute. Hear, we can't you hear you. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, no. I think I was <laughs> the only person um, gaming before we started filming. But um, there actually is. We should try to find it and post it. There's a cute video of me and Imani playing Switch together. I think in like in one, one of the, the first trailers, weeks. right? Yeah, of us filming. I, I think we were that playing. Video. Yeah, I think we were playing, um, we might have been playing Rayman, actually. But it was, it was very sweet. It was very cute. Oh, that's awesome. And now who's all playing on a Switch right now? I was playing on my mobile device. Ta -da. We got a lot, a lot of Switchers. I'm playing on Xbox. A lot of Nintendo Switch here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. All right, we're going to do another 4v4 match. I need glasses. <laughs> What'd you say, Moni? <laughs> I need God, we can't just wait. Was the last match four v four? Yes, that was four v four. I thought that it was yes. every man for himself. <laughs> <laughs> so pick with you, Charlotte. Just the color. Yeah, that's kind of how it went too. I feel like it was so chaotic with all eight of us that I was just attacking anyone that was near me. So <laughs> I'm really. Sorry. I think that's where we were all at. And that's fine. So that's why it was a warm-up match, and we're going to do another 4v4. <laughs> so now you can see what color uh, your team is. It's red and blue. And then okay. um, hopefully we'll attack the right people this time. Somebody is trash-talking me. Guys, Fingers crossed. Trash-talking me. I don't appreciate it. I'm being don't a trash-talk. Trash -talk. <laughs> Everyone be nice. Else. Can you hear me Okay. Now? Yes! yes! I hear yeah. you, Jesse! Yay. Yay. Yay! You're back! I am a woman using tech! Woo! <laughs> there we go! <laughs> Alright, okay. choose your legends. I think we need three more people in. And then we're going to play another 4v4 match. And hopefully we'll be able to keep track of what teams are on. But I feel like at first it's just going to be chaos again. <laughs> I feel We're like gonna figure the out. same color, yeah. even though they're not. <laughs> Charlotte, can you say, can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> what can you smell? What the rock is cooking? Yeah, that's one of his taglines. <laughs> nice. That's nice. That is one of his taglines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Imani, right? we'll need you to start the game. Imani, go ahead and, and start the game oh. now. Where everyone's in. Okay. Yeah. That Thanks. So funny. Uh, Go ahead and choose a map, y'all. And we are now at $3,340 raised. Thank you so much for smashing woo, our goal, y'all. Thank you. Y'all are the best. All right, here comes. All right, so that, that's your team right there. So I'm with Rayman, Thatch, and Mirage. Ladies, we're all on the same. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, this map is. Okay. okay. Oh, this is a tough one. This is a yeah, tough map. Already okay. like a map I'm gonna, oh, oh my god! To, oh no! I just, oh, my god. Oh, oh my god! 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 What? How do I? The map's oh, gonna oh, close oh, all. Oh, oh, it's oh, gonna be the map. What? Oh, god. What? <laughs> what? Get me out of here! Who chose me? The map's gonna do this. Whoa! How do I? 
I no, I want it. <laughs> Roll yeah. and it moves me. This is what? It moves. not ideal. It moves. I'm just trying to live. <laughs> Charlotte Did I die from going too hard? Oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. oh boy. <laughs> who's just hanging out? No, no, who's hanging out? Up here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Woo! Dang it. I saw y'all just hanging out up here on this rant. <laughs> Can I have another life? Oh my yes, god. Yes, you can track your, your lives in the top right corner. And that oh, yeah, I know, but I just ran off. I just ran off. Oh no, yeah, so. be careful. Be careful. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my goodness, no! Oh, I need a second to breathe. <laughs> oh, no. I need a second. <laughs> I'm stressed. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, no, yeah, just... no. Wait, oh, I don't trust <laughs> it. No, I'm oh, sure no, no, I don't no. die. <laughs> No. Oh nope. boy. Nope. 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 Oh, we're really you can out. go okay. through that little. <laughs> so like, be careful. We got this. We got this. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, you can throw it you with can your throw bumper. Throw with uh, right bumper. Use, Sorry, use your I bumper. Know. Either bumper will work. Yeah. What? What does Hello. bumper even oh. mean? Oh, sorry. It is the thin it's button on the top. Where you can feel. It. You could feel it with maybe with like your pointer finger. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. I can't tell who's that on my team sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm oh, so sorry. I'm so sorry. How dare you? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> no, I'm proud of you. Nice. It was a yes. good kill. It was a clean kill. Where am I? Oh, there I am. Exactly. Oh. Here it is. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know where I'm going. Oh, anymore. I didn't see you. There I am. No! Ooh, ooh, ooh. I just oh, need to know who one. chose this. This is mine because I don't know. I know. This right? map is horrible. I did random, so this I map is terrible. Oh, yeah, you know what? I can't even talk to you. I did random. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we know about random. <laughs> and Do not. And sometimes the result of this. <laughs> Charlotte. Oh my goodness. Charlotte! <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. oh my god. This is where I live. This is my house. No, 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 no. Oh boy. Oops. No. Oh no! I put my weapon away! <laughs> yeah, I, it happens. Pick up another no. one. You can pick up another one. It's fine. No, I fell. No. I'm sorry if I'm screaming in anyone's ear. <laughs> I know. Oh, this out that goes for Brawlhalla. I'm out. Please avenge me, team. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just all of us versus Oh, oh god! It's and I just one. Back down. Oh, well. Uh, let's answer some questions. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's we're gonna, this. We're gonna shout out some donors. There we go. Um, Allie. Allie gave $50. She says, keep up the hilarity on Mythic Quest and teaching the best devs of the future Black Girls Code. P.S. Poppy's women in tech speech had me in tears. Can we talk about the speech, though? That was Charlie? such so a good, good speech. It was such a good moment. It was a very what was that like fun, to know? It was a very fun scene to shoot. Oh, no! It was a oh, no! <laughs> Charlie, get to safety! Get to safety! Oh, get to safety! Oh, 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 my God! There's a side of Charlie versus the pillar. <laughs> and the pillar one. Oh, 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 my gosh, Char, that was really intense. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, I don't know why I chose the tiniest platform to try to get that. I'm impressed. I'm so impressed. <laughs> uh, an anonymous donor what? gave $50, said, love you, Mythic Quest women. Love we you, love Felicia. You. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> hooray for getting to meet Vanessa and Joyelle on this stream. You're all such hard workers and incredibly smart, funny, talented women. Oh. Congratulations on all of this Aww. amazing fundraising. Thank you, Anonymous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So kind. That's so nice. Also, shout out to Kelly, who gave $20. She said, so much love for what you're all doing for representation in game dev, inspiring women to get in there and change the game. Thank you, Kelly. Jacob Carmack gave $20 and said, love you, Joy, and love the work you do. Keep it up. Jacob, thank you. <laughs> and then Talia, oh. ooh, Talia Benavides 
don't know if I said that right. But she donated $200 and said, this stream is fantastic and your stories are so inspiring. Thank you so much for tuning in, Talia, and for donating. Look at Ray that Mango so much. and just defending such a our team single-handedly. Oh, I know that I was on the red team, but I've got to be honest, I'm rooting for Vanessa. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because Vanessa is just... Vanessa is just carrying like our team. <laughs> yes. Oh, jeez, <laughs> And if you want to donate, we'll drop that link in the chat. Thank you all to everyone who's donating and hanging out with us on Twitch. Here it comes the link. Yeah. Now. Only $160 oh, to our goal of $35. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're so close. Oh, We're so close. No. I don't want oh, it. Oh wait, we're even closer. Don't don't even go. Go. Come on, Vanessa. Ah, ah. Oh my gosh. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm we're only hundred and ten dollars away from our goal. There's not. I lied to you. Showdown. It's now a showdown. Oh, oh shit. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. This, is, this oh. is intense. I could Go never be team. a shoutcaster. I'd just be like, huh, huh, Go wait, huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, so yes. sound effects. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, blue team! Wow. Blue team! Wow. 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 That was all well Vanessa. Done. Vanessa is Vanessa, you really <laughs> carry it. <laughs> Through your spirit, I felt it. That was nuts! <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, I wow. I can, that, you know, for, for the blue incredible. team. Incredible. Does your back hurt from carrying all of us? Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. We're going to start a new room, and we're going to start a new um, game mode. We're going to go into our next game mode, which is crew battle, and we're going to have some 1v1 matches, but we're still going to be on teams. So there will be two teams. Last team standing wins. Only one opponent from each team is up on the battlefield at a time. So keep watching the screen to see when you're up to defend your team. So okay. we can't completely depend on Vanessa anymore. Dang. But we are going to do the best that we can. OK, hold on. Let me join the room first, and then I will let y'all in after that. OK. OK. Well, so we're going back out of this room. Go ahead. Any updates or questions? I do have a question. I, I've heard uh, you know, through Instagram and whatnot that there's a podcast. I yes. need details about the podcast. Questies, besties, I want to hear about it because y'all really seem like your best friends in real life. So, like, what what's the podcast? Give us the deets. We we really are best friends, and you know, we as every season comes out for our show, we get to do all this press, and we get to, you know we get questions like, what are some funny stories from making the show? But most of the time, the four women are not paired together, and so many of our stories involved the four of us and so we kept finding that we had all these stories at the end of our press tours that we hadn't told and that we were desperate to tell so megan gans and david hornsby and rob McElhaney once again had this brilliant idea to start a podcast that the four of us host and we have guests on from the show and we talk about each episode it's, it's a classic rewatch podcast and we give you <laughs> stories about what was going on behind the scenes and what we do on our downtime and how we've created this bond. And it's really fun and a little sentimental, just like the show. And needless to say, it's something that you should listen to because it'll make your day good. And I think we have to talk about today with Denny Poon, today? right? Yes, is it, today? is it today or tomorrow? Oh, it's today. <gasps> Tuesdays, I think it comes out on Tuesdays. So it's, uh, this episode is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Poody. Tomorrow, yes, that's Tuesday. And, um, and we, we call him the questy bestie guesty and we'll ask him some guesty questies which is a question <laughs> i love that <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing i love that all right is, is everyone, everyone in? are we missing someone it's oh, me everyone that wants I'm to not... play oh no okay. i got kicked out uh, okay go ahead and rejoin no worries hold we'll on i'm gonna time. rejoin yeah. one of my favorite Who's details about the there? podcast as well is that Originally, David, I think David approached Rob and Megan and was like, we should have the women of the cast do a podcast because they're all really close and they all hang out anyway. And Megan and Rob were like, yeah, but you also have to be there. So it's <laughs> four of us and then David. It's making David really uncomfortable with how complimentary we are. 
Yeah, David's, um, David's uh, pretty dry in his sense of humor, and he's not effusive with his compliments the way that we are to each other. <laughs> so there's, there's a we, we get him there sometimes. We do. We break He'll him down in the course of the season, but um, but it's very funny at the early in the early episodes how complimentary we all are to each other and to David, and then how kind of uncomfortable he gets. <laughs> 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 Charlotte, could you choose oh, your I love character? That. Who I'm assuming is going Did to Did I not walk? already do it? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh here, here we, we go. go. That's okay. Just showed up. Big okay. surprise. All right, vote for a okay, map. Which one is the easiest? Which is the easiest map? Yeah, which one? <laughs> uh, maybe I want the easy the map. First one? Yeah. <laughs> so, this is going to be 1v1, but we are on, still on teams. So, this is crew <clears> battle. Okay. And this is a new Wait, mode, so and we're, we're, we're going for it. So watch for your character to appear on screen to defend your team. So we're all going to take turns. Oh, crap. Oh, I see. So oh, it's my God. Yes. Is that oh, no, you? it's me. It's just me. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, God, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Whoop. It's a good pair. Oh, no. oh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. You guys, I gotta blow my nose. I'm gonna mute myself, but I'm just. <laughs> I'll go for it. it. <laughs> okay. Yell at it. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. You're so considerate. It's really so much scarier <laughs> that you're a shark. I really feel like I'm fighting Joe, and it's. Intense. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was intending. No! <laughs> okay, Vanessa Sneaky Joyelle. Now, as fans oh, of no, the wait, show. Oh, no, wait, you didn't mean to do that. As fans oh of the show, what were some of your favorite okay. scenes from Mythic Quest? Some of our favorite oh, scenes. Oh, <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> oh, now you're playing? No, no. Okay, Joya. No, now I'm playing Vanessa. Wait, no, no, I'm Vanessa. Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I would say uh, Dana's story arc. Started mm -hmm. from the bottom, oh, now we're here. <laughs> hey! Yeah, yeah. baby! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Climbing the rank. This is a good matchup right here. Oh, I'm not okay. <laughs> Vanessa's oh. not playing around. Oh, geez, no, she's not. <laughs> oh, no. oh, I'm very scared. <laughs> <laughs> Place for keeps. And I respect that. Oh, geez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is really intense. This okay. is very intense. Oh, I love the defensive getaway play here. Oh god! Ooh, no! The oh, double no! uppercut. Oh, oh, wow. Who's next? Who's this? Oh no. I'm terrified. Who's up? Wait, is this Charlotte? <laughs> Who's that? I'm not sure. No, it's Charlotte's the rock. Okay. Oh. Who's that? It's me? Oh, it's Joyelle. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's Joyelle. Oh, it's Joyelle. Okay. okay. No, but Joy, get a right. get a weapon oh, so we can so we can battle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is how she likes. I think she likes oh, that <laughs> She's trying to suck you out. There's no wrong way. No, to play. no, no. Well, maybe there is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Nessa, you are an assassin. Oh, what? Ooh. Oh my god, <laughs> that was so intense. <laughs> that was so intense. <laughs> Reminders to the chat that we're oh, so oh, close oh. to our new goal. Oh. We're at $3,390. We're trying to get to $3,500. Not very far away. So go ahead and get those donations rolling in. Just hit exclamation mark donate in the chat, which I will do right now. And there's the link. Get those donations in. And thank you to everyone that's donated so far. Yes. I can't believe we've, <laughs> we've exceeded our goal. We're almost $1,000 over. Amazing. That's amazing. 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 <laughs> oh, it's me. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> oh, no. I can't. It's 1v1. Okay. <laughs> so are we it's waiting for me to go? I don't know. It's How okay. It's Ubisoft up? versus Ubisoft. We got this. Ah. <laughs> How do I pick up the... Oh, ooh, yes. Come here. Come here. Hey. Ah. Oh my god, what? What? Raymond is ruthless. 
<laughs> oh no, 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 no. Up, 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 Anonymous gave us $50. They said, love you, MQ women. Love you, Felicia. Hooray for getting to meet Vanessa and Joyelle on the stream. You're all such hard workers and incredibly smart, funny, talented women. Congratulations on all of this amazing fundraiser. Fundraising. We might have read these already, Jesse, Jess. we, yeah, we read oh. these ones, but there's a new one. If, there's a new one, Jess, if you scroll down. We do okay. have one new Here donation. So now we're only $90 away. From, nice. from Nuha Al Qadi, she wrote, "Love you, oh my Vanessa. gosh, Nuha. I'm so proud of you." Oh, and thanks, then, Nuha. And then it looks like BWS family donated again, and they said, "Joyelle, you are my hero." Oh, that's amazing! That's my family. Oh, my family. Oh, wait, no, we just beat oh, the goal. Thank you. Oh my gosh, we just got a new oh, donation from. Yes, we're at three thousand five hundred and ten dollars. You guys are incredible. John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Just donated a hundred dollars. Just over the top. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. So we've already Amazing. been able to sponsor somebody for a full year of Black Girls Code. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Incredible. That's incredible. what it's all about. Thank you all so much. All right, how are we doing here? Come on, Charlotte. 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 You got this. a big weapon. Got that this. weapon is intimidating. <laughs> big old hammer. <laughs> big old hammer. I'm... Channel the rock. <laughs> what were the rock Think of that part in Fast and the Furious where he flexed so hard they broke his cast. He broke his cast <laughs> in Furious 7. I just watched it. <laughs> so good. What? <laughs> you got this, Charlotte. Oh, oh. 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 what? Oh, my God. Oh wait, I'm back. Finn's oh, back. Finn's I back. I out. I was Ash is back, yeah. Time. We all have three oh. shots, yeah. <laughs> oh. Were you muted? Okay, now what about... Yes. Oh! Charlotte was oh, muted! No. It's... Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay, now what about celebrities? We had Snoop Dogg as a special guest. We had some oh, other no. amazing cameos this season. Um, if Can there's a next, cameo? another season... Yes. Yes. Let's talk favorite cameos. Who was your favorite guest? Well, we had a really awesome opportunity. All of the women on this stream had their significant others work on this season, which was really cool. My fiance, Max, worked in our camera department. We had Charlotte's husband, Baden, in the like the <gasps> music department. His song, uh, We Drink Light, is in Everlight. And then we have Ooh. Chris Naoki Lee, who is Imani's oh, partner. And we had Mort Burke, who's Ashley's partner, as actors yeah. on the show. And so that was something that was really special, especially during oh, COVID, yeah. to get to have our loved oh, ones. Oh, my gosh. It was really fun. Oh, yeah, no, that was no, great. No, 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 and then we have Derek Waters. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, Caitlin McGee oh, no. and Naomi X. Bergen, who play Sue and Carol, respectively. And I think they oh, are God. some of the top. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> We have in our cast, and then Derek yes. Waters showed up. Oh, he was the awesome. Crap out of me. I love him. And then of course, yeah, Snoop Dogg. I'm <laughs> scared. No, 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 no! I can't. Oh, I fell. Ooh, ooh. What? Uh, Are you gonna? Uh, I fell. <laughs> more blood. Give me more blood. Oh no, it's Imani. No. Wait, I need a weapon. I need a weapon. <laughs> I can't beat you up. Too sad. Wait. Ah! I don't think you feel that guilty, Ash. No, I actually <laughs> feel that guilty. <laughs> Jesse, you're incredible. Dean is a better uh, gamer. I think she's yeah, you did. Nicole, so you can beat me. Jesse, you're show. so good at remembering everybody's names. You've got like the receipts on everybody. Oh yeah, dude. I love that. So, I'm just so proud of the group of people we get to work with, and so it's a joy to get to shout them out. I love that's it. Awesome. And that's so cool about everyone's significant others and their partners getting to be a part of the show. That's amazing. Yeah, it was so sweet. It was awesome. Woo! You know, it's funny because I tried to family. When you work with mm -hmm. people this much, it starts to feel like you get to work with your family. And so it was really, oh, really special to actually welcome our families <laughs> into the work. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's oh, super God. special. That's oh, so no. nice. Oh, God. What about future seasons? Oh, 
What about celebrities that you'd want to see next season? Well, I don't know. Fingers I don't crossed. Know how he would, I don't know how he would be able to work into this story, but my dream is to one day get to work with RuPaul. I think that would just be... Oh, yes. yes. That would be, oh, that'd be so fun. That would be the best. Yes. Megan Gans, our co-creative... Uh, our co-creator would lose her mind because she. Yeah, so <laughs> um, we're getting a lot of questions like about Dana's shirts. Oh my god! Ladies, <laughs> You're definitely gonna kill me. Yeah, we all did. Um, merch shirts. Oh, right. hey! <laughs> Girl, Chico, we've got Girl, Chico, Chico. 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 Yeah, Chico. 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 I'm not coming Chico out of my ass. That's great. Our quiet death and all those shirts are available on the soft website. Yes, I will get the link for y'all in just a second. But yeah, you can get your own <laughs> Mythic Quest shirts on, also. Bring it. Awesome. Bring it, Ashley. Oh boy. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Come out this isn't it. Come get me. Come get me. in the chat. Come get me. <laughs> Mommy. Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh, this oh, is him! Oh, oh, what is oh, this? Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> you got coffee. You got coffee. <laughs> is that Joelle? Like yeah. hot potato. Oh no. Oh no, it's, it's Joelle. Okay. Okay, I'm Joelle. ready. Do it. I said this in the middle oh, of saying no. a bunch of things, but but we have another donor from John. He gave us a hundred dollars. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yay! Thank you, John. Yay. Oh, one of the questions I see in the chat, I'm not sure if oh. we've answered it yet, um, but was, how do you get your start in the gaming industry? And I think the person who asked was recently graduated. Oh, um, great. Yeah, and if you're recently graduated, I think that's actually a great opportunity to get into the games industry because there are a ton of, well, I think it, it depends where you're located, but specifically for, for Ubisoft, there is the Ubisoft Graduate Program, who's, which specifically looks out for recent graduates, and uh, they usually have different specializations that you can apply to, whether or not it's uh, you know in project management. I believe there's one for programming as well. Um, and I think there should be some for uh, similar similar studios too. I think I saw one for Blizzard recently as well. So if you're a recent graduate and looking to get into the gaming industry, other than what we talked about mentorship wise and you know showing up to career fair specifically for interactive media, that's another oh, good oh, oh, sorry. another good outlet as well. Okay. Uh, wait, who's this? Who am I playing? <laughs> I who's think it's Soleimani. I think it's Soleimani, yeah. <laughs> She's trying to be stealth. Okay, it ain't that serious, Imani. Chill. Okay. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! That was the rocks. Imani, that was brutal. Come on, Charlotte. I just want to know what I did to deserve that. It was uncalled for. <laughs> Absolutely uncalled Imani, for. Imani currently has three lives. She's the only person. Oh my Imani god, does she live three forever. Whoa. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm done with this. <laughs> Yufsa said, I want to see Imani versus Vanessa, two titans of Brawlhalla right there. Yeah, we're going to have to see that after this. <laughs> or it might eventually happen here. I'm really Where's... glad that we're on the same oh, team right god. now. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> Who's up? <laughs> Charlotte versus Jesse. Oh, oh darn. Jesse. Oh, Jesse, you're up. Oh darn. <laughs> Did we already shout out Zamorsi? I don't know how to pronounce that. Zamorsi donated $500. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, oh my gosh. Mark. Oh wow. I think we only yeah. have we only have 15 more minutes of fundraising. So if you're holding out, now's the time to drop. Mm -hmm. some Listen, dollars. get now, in there. That time. time. I will drop that link again in the chat for you, so you can donate and help us. Thank you, Chastity. Goal. No problem. Don't, why don't you go ahead and donate some money if you think Jesse is gonna win? Oh my there god. Go. I'm gonna win! Ooh. I'm gonna win! <laughs> or donate against Jesse 
if you think Charlotte's gonna win. <laughs> there you go. Oh god, no jump. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh, whoa. Come on, Charlotte. <laughs> you got this. Jesse, you also got this. I'm rooting for both of you. Okay. Yes. Everyone's both a winner. Both of you equally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm voting for everybody. <laughs> oh. Ooh, woo. Oh. Ooh. oh, ready. On the attack. This is a good battle. Wow, wow. This is good. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. Oh. oh! One flying. Keep jumping, keep jumping, keep jumping. Whoa. Charlotte! Oh. Oh. I I Am I good at this game now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, you have to go get Vanessa's back. Oh, back. Vanessa's back. <laughs> oh boy. I feel like when I have. Oh wait! Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, you know what? Let me. Oh. Oh. I'm rooting for the underdog. Unbeatable. Whoop. Oh, oh, I oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's me now. Oh, God. All right. Hi. 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 Back. <laughs> oh, that was honorable. Oh, that was honor honorable. Oh, boy. Um, this is intense. I can't believe I... Imani did me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be salty about that for a while. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I, I had to, it oh, was I'm so bad. Less than 15 yeah, minutes left in our fundraiser. Ah! The link is Nothing in the chat. Like <laughs> oh, my gosh. No! We got another. <laughs> another You're a monster. Ah. <laughs> you don't even have a weapon. This is embarrassing. <laughs> ah. Ah. I love that Vanessa plays with a smile on her face the entire time. <laughs> she loves it. She loves kicking no, the ass out of me. Here. Ah. Oh, thank ah. you, Colin. Shout out to Colin. He just donated 20 bucks. No. Thank, thank you, you Colin. Colin. Oh, no. No, Colin. <laughs> Respect. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, please, please. <laughs> oh my god, that was so intense. <laughs> it is. It's very intense. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Vanessa! <laughs> <laughs> it's a standoff. It's a standoff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops, sorry. No. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Matthew, oh, thank you for $100. Is. Matthew Whoa, donated $100. Whoa, thank nice. you so much. Thank you. We're now at three thousand six hundred and thirty dollars. We've exceeded our yeah. goal by so much. We love to see it. Amazing. Thank you, Matthew. Uh oh. Oh no! Ooh. <laughs> no. Ooh. It was yeah. intense. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh no! I need a weapon. I need a weapon. Oh no. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> she just fell off. Yes, she <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? You can do it, Felicia. Oh no. No, okay. Felicia, you can do it. <sighs> okay. Here, get a weapon. Felicia, you there have it. <laughs> I threw mine. Oh god, wait, wait, what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Charlie, 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 no, no pressure. pressure. Come on, Charlie, you got it. You can do it. Okay. Yes. I got it. Oh I got God. it. Get a weapon. Get a weapon. Oh, oh, oh no. Don't oh, oh, you can do it. Oh, just no. 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 Oh, God. Charlie. I wish we had a clip of you saying, am I good at this game now? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, for that oh, you know what? That was a worthy sacrifice right at the end from Charlotte. That's you know, sometimes we yeah. all need that. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank y'all. That was fun. So we have ten minutes Ooh. left in our fundraiser stream. So chat, I wanna hear if you wanna see us play. Uh do you wanna see any 1v1s? If so, let us know who. Or we could play Kung Foot. <laughs> 
what do you want to see? Vote for Kung Fu or list a matchup and we'll we'll play something next. But yeah, we will uh, mm. leave this room. While you guys are deciding, yeah. I'm really sorry mm. I got paid, but I'll be back in like one minute. I wanted, I wanted fine. to try to be a Go for it. Hold it. Come on, it's making me Go mad. for it. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mega Ran for the raid. Mega Ran raided yeah, our stream. Yeah, just say Mega Ran raided. Thank you, Mega Ran. Hey, Mega Ran. Awesome. All right, let's back out of this room and start a new room. Okay. Right, Yusuf. And we will do something new. Vote for Kung Fu if you want, or or vote for a one v one. All right. Okay. There's a demand for Imani versus Vanessa. Let's make that happen. Yeah, oh, I, I want to see that. Very intense. <laughs> uh, I don't want to see it. <laughs> so, Yusuf, if you could create a room, and we're going to do a Monty versus Vanessa show down here, and let us know what room code to join. Okay, thank you. And yes, we have nine mm -hmm. minutes left in our stream, and you can still donate and help us raise yes. money for Black Girls Code. We're at $3,720. Thank you guys so much. Ooh. Amazing. You exceeded our expectations. You smashed all of our goals. We kept making new goals during the stream. You kept smashing them. Love to see it. <laughs> but we're going to spectate this final match of Imani versus Vanessa. <laughs> Ooh, okay. oh, it's intense. It's already so much pressure. Okay. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Quest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. God, that's Imani. Vanessa, I respect uh -huh. you as a person, but you're going down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's what oh, a kind Jesse, way to say that I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I just want to say to anyone who's just now joining us for raising funds for Black Girls Code, you can follow the link in the description and donate, please do. We are funding a scholarship for someone to go to Black Girls Code for a full year. So every dollar matters, even the person who gave us five cents, we're grateful to you. So please follow that link, give us a couple dollars. We are very grateful to you, so thank you. Yes, yes, we've had a few you. donations yeah. come in. Derek said, I love you, Jesse. Joe is my spirit animal. He gave 20 bucks. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Whitney also oh donated $50. Thank you, Whitney. And Jerome said, thanks for what you do, and donated 20 bucks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jerome. So much kindness. Yeah. Thanks, Jerome. Thanks, Whitney. Thank thanks, you. Derek. Oh, my gosh. That intense. was so intense. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't even have a weapon. Jeez, Louise. Come on, please. I was going to say. more about Black Girls Code and to Oh, my gosh. She was like, nah, you're not getting it. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Shit. Ooh, boy. Imani just knocked off of one of Vanessa's wives. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> Louise. Imani did not come here to play, first of all. Mm -mm. <laughs> I feel like oh I'm doing goodness. a bad Wild D impression. Imani. <laughs> <laughs> Wild D. Wild D. Wild D. Oh, we just got fifty dollars from Michelle. Thank oh, you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Derek, I just We're at three thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars, you guys. Amazing. So good. Love to see it. Oh, this is intense. Ooh. This is intense. Ooh, okay. Wow. 2v2. <laughs> but Vanessa's in the yellow. Oh, boy. Oh. What's going to happen? Uh. Ooh. 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 They both have two stocks left. Oh, no, jump, oh, jump, come jump. On, come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the most terrifying weapon. You are so intimidating right <laughs> now, Imani. <laughs> Very with <laughs> Ooh. I think they have like the same amount of health left at the moment. They oh no! Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Just lost okay. one life. He still has one left. Still has one left. Money, money! Yes! BWS family just donated more money as well. I can't see it. Oh, thank I think you. it was $20. Yes, $20. Yeah. $20. And it says, You ladies are just amazing. Shout out to oh you, Joy. Gosh. We love you. Making us proud as always. Aww. Aww. Thank you. Don't make me cry. 
Johnny, come on. Oh, my $10. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys, we're at $3,800 right now. That's insane. Yeah. They both okay. only have one life left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one life to live. <laughs> and for those asking in the chat, please, donations are for Black Girls Code. Joelle, do you want to plug Black Girls Code one more time for those who joined late? Yes. Please, thank you everyone else who has donated. We appreciate your support. Uh, we have crushed our goals, set a new crushed one, it. and crushed that one as well. <laughs> um, we really appreciate it. This will go to our girls, seven through 17, our alumni, 18 to 25, um, to continue to support them, inspire, and empower them. Ooh, wow! Thank you, Joyelle. Amazing! Wow! Oh my gosh, Vanessa, wow. you did it! <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa right? Wow! MVP! Wow! MVP! Wow. That was sure. intense. Wow. I'm so <laughs> impressed. Oh my goodness! All right, well, that's going to be close to the end of our stream. We've got a few minutes left, but first, let's talk about a few things. So we've got. The season two of Mythic Quest, you can watch the entire season now on Apple TV Plus. So go and do that. It's so good, so funny. So good. Uh, Questy Besties, talk about Questy Besties one more time and tell them where to listen to it. Anywhere you find your podcasts. Quest uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> no, you go, you Please. go, you go. <laughs> it's a lot of this. It's us interrupting each other and going, no, you go ahead. Um, <laughs> it is a recap podcast of, oh, sorry, we just got to four grand. Four oh grand! Oh my God! Oh my God. Sean just donated two hundred dollars. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, oh my, my God. God! That's amazing. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So we Thank doubled you. our pledge. We want, we were hoping to raise two thousand dollars, and we doubled that. Thank you all so much for That's donating. That's incredible. This is totally made my month, my year. Yeah, this is amazing. amazing. Um, well, I don't really, we don't need to go on about Questy Besties now. That was too cool. Just, you can listen to it if you want it to recap podcasts. We're on it. If you liked this, it's more of this. Um, but that's amazing. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thanks to Joyelle from Black Girls Code. You can learn more about Black Girls Code yeah. at blackgirlscode.com. Anything else you want to say, Joyelle? Cover it all. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you are helping us to achieve our goal to teach 1 million girls how to code by 2040 and all of it helps. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Vanessa, thanks for joining us from Ubisoft Toronto. And thanks My to pleasure. Felicia for hosting today. Thank you both. Yeah, Felicia. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, Felicia. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you thanks to our all. special guests from the cast of Mythic Quest, Charlotte, Assy, Jesse, and Imani. Thank you so much. And I've been Chastity from the Ubisoft News Teams. We stream every Wednesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time right here on Twitch. So come back for some Track Mania on Wednesday. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Chastity. Thank Bye, you everybody. All. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.